speak on the South, man, and you speak on your top 10 groups of all times, man, you can't leave out the Dirty Boys, man. They from the most racist state in the United States, man. Them boys from Alabama, Montgomery to be exact. So you know what they had to go through to fight the good fight just to get they recognition in the hip hop, you know, because it ain't too much to do out there in Montgomery. But self sit on the trees and have mosquitoes bite you all night. You know what I'm saying? Them boys is from a slave state. And a lot of their ancestors went through a lot of pain down there. So it, you can hear it in the music. You know what I'm saying? And these boys was able to get signed from a promoter, you know, that liked their music when they was in the streets. Because these boys was trapping. Way back in the days, they were selling peas, and you know, they were selling a little hard or whatever, and soft in the trap. And you know, they promoted Mike J Jackson, he robbed them, and Jay Prince had to go sign them and clear up everything, man. And you know, them boys had to get up out of Alabama because it was too racist, and they had to go make their music up in Houston for a little while, and you know. They beat up the promoter, Mike Jackson. Actually, they was their manager, too. And, you know, after all these years, the gangster, he ended up moving away. He ended up moving out west. And him and Pimp, they still do music from time to time when the gangster come back into town. But, you know, uh, the gangster, man, he a family man, man. You know what I'm saying? He... he he really ain't about that rap like the pimp is. Cause you know, the pimp, he was the muscle. He was like keeping everything together and stuff like that. Cause he the older cousin. Cause you know, the pimp and the gangster, they real cousins. And they been rapping since the fifth grade. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the gangster used to be a lot fatter. But he done slimmed down over the years, you know, because he was young back then. He was still in high school when, you know, them boys started taking off. And, you know, that black clown posse, them boys deep in that folk nation, you know what I'm saying, with them uh, Chicago killers and Detroit killers, you know what I'm saying. The boys heavy affiliated in that gang life. You know what I'm saying? Way back in the days, because them boys game bang up there. You know what I'm saying? From Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you know what I'm saying? The cat Mike Jackson, he had done told uh, Jay Prince he'll take 80 racks for the boys and sign some album deals. And the boys, which was Dirty Boys, they was happened to be in the office, and they heard the conversation, and they didn't agree with it. So Jay Prince ordered a hit out on the dude, and, you know, they couldn't catch him. And then one day they finally caught him when the dude robbed him for some money for a show that he was booking because the manager just started booking shows taking money and uh, not letting Dirty Boys perform, not telling the Dirty Boys that he was taking advances and uh, front ends. He was taking front ends. So, you know, Dirty Boys' name got real bad and dirty because of all these shows that they was missing because the manager was stealing from them because they had the big hit out, hit the flow. And, you know, at that time, they couldn't trace everything at that time. So they couldn't be everywhere every time. You know, they only can be one place at a time. And, you know, uh, Dirty Boys caught him leaving out of club when they found out his location. And they pulled up on him like eight deep and they beat him. They beat him bad because, you know, they lost everything after that. When they signed to Jay Prince, Jay Prince just paid him a flat up fee and gave him the amount of money that he told him that he'll give him. And they ain't get nothing else. 
You know what I'm saying? You ain't heard nothing about the Dirty Boys. They spent 200K on their video because they had a major deal. And they they, they sold like 100,000 short from going gold. So they sold like 400,000. You know what I'm saying? Which was real good. But back then, that was considered a flop. But everybody like, man, that single lease went gold, bro. They they lying to y'all about the numbers y'all sold because people listen to that song, man. You know, all that other stuff Dirty Boys made, I ain't going to lie, we didn't really listen to it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was a few of them. Thank like Candy Man, and we didn't play that song. The only way we would play it or hear it unless the DJ had it. Nobody didn't have the whole Dirty Boy CD because either they thought it was kind of trash or they couldn't get their hands on it or they bought it and they told a friend there's only two, three good songs on it. Because, you know, the way they was rapping, they was talking about that gangster stuff and that gang stuff way back and that pimp stuff way back. So if you didn't know nothing about those two things that they do in Alabama, this CD really wasn't for you. But, you know, they put it out to the consumers as if it was, you know, straight, regular uh, hip-hop. But it took off like crazy in Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville, Oklahoma, City, uh, OKC, you know, uh, Tulsa. You know, it took off out there heading west, Nebraska, these places here in Texas, you know, because Jay Prince took a ride to go see them boys. When he found out what happened to them, them boys wouldn't have no more money, and they was looking confused because, you know, Universal didn't know what to do with them. They weren't going to do nothing else with them. And uh, they found out the money was missing and stuff. And, you know, before they even got a chance to whoop their promoter and ex-manager, Jay Prince was already riding down there to get in their ear. Because he liked how the music was coming out. But all the music was coming out through their cousin. That dude Fangus. You know what I'm saying? That dude was uh, doing all the production. That's what he really was drawn in about. And you know what I'm saying? But he took the group. He didn't do much with them. You know what I'm saying? But just get a bag out of them independent. Because in Texas, it was a lot of cities that they had to go perform in. And that was enough to get Jay Prince his money back because he only paid less than six figures for both of them. So he ran that up in one week. First two shows, he made his money back. You know what I'm saying? And he had them 